an interest in Antichrist and prophecy and an interest in scripture are not mutually exclusive. The reality of the Antichrist and his coming before the return of Christ is a teaching of scripture. And as we get closer to the return of Christ, Jesus is, by his Holy Spirit, quickening the hearts and minds of Christians towards prophecy, towards what he said to do. When you see these things happening, be alert. Now, I grant you, there are many erroneous teachings surrounding his return, including pre-tribulationism. There are many erroneous teachings surrounding his return. Uh, many things. Nonetheless, he was clear, be alert when you see these things happening. There's not some kind of a conflict between an interest in the Antichrist and an interest in prophecy. And we are told when you see these things happening, we need to watch political events transpiring in the global stage, particularly in the Middle East and in Europe, to do what Jesus said in order to be alert. Again, I pointed out innumerable times, this time in history is very different than the other times in history when sincere believers thought the Lord was coming because Israel has been regathered together as a nation and because Jews are beginning to believe in him again in significant numbers the first time since the early church. So the two are not mutually exclusive. Concerning your question of 2 Timothy chapter 3, um, verse 15, let's read the context beginning in verse 14. You, however, continue in the things you've learned and become convinced of, knowing from when you have learned them. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, learning from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is always him in eternity. Now Timothy was half Greek and half Jewish. His father was a Greek, his mother was a, a Jewess. He learned the scriptures from his mother. His father may have been a Gentile proselyte to Judaism, who was not ethnically Jewish, Jewish but converted to believe in it, or he may have at least been a Gentile God-fearer who, who believed without undergoing formal conversion to Old Testament Judaism. Nonetheless, Timothy was groomed in the Hebrew scriptures from his youth. He was brought up studying the scriptures, knowing and believing and being taught the Messiah would, would come. These are the mysteries, the presence of Jesus in the Old Testament, the presence of Christ in the Old Testament, the Messianic prophecies led him to understand salvation. That is, salvation is in Jesus. Now again, in the Hebrew and Aramaic languages, we have to understand Jesus' name, Yeshua, Yeshua. If you pronounce it, <coughs> Yeshua, it is salvation. It literally means salvation. It's the word for salvation. I could say in Hebrew, Yeshua hu Yeshua tenu. Jesus, he is our salvation. Yeshua hu Yeshua tenu. This mystery was in the Old Testament. But elsewhere, Paul writes of the mystery of the gospel. The mystery of the gospel is that in fulfillment of the prophetic promise made to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, through Abraham, the seed of Abraham, all the tribes of the earth would be blessed. The Messiah would come and bring Gentiles into the kingdom of God, not only Jews, but Jew and Gentile together, which was personified in Timothy as he was half Jew and half Gentile. He personified that reality. He was both a Jew and a Gentile, as Abraham was. Abraham had been a Gentile. God converted to Judaism. Well, Timothy was a Jew and a Gentile. He was he was mixed blood like my family. So, um, well, my wife's pure blood, but in any event, that's what he was. He personified this mystery, as Paul would elsewhere describe it. The mystery, again, looking at verse 15 from childhood, you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you wisdom. The wisdom is to understand the mystery of the gospel. The wisdom is to be able to identify the Messiah through the Hebrew scriptures. That is the wisdom of salvation it is talking about. 
Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering uh, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen. Will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo. What the scripture actually teaches about the rapture. The snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo. All available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.